Today I will introduce the group theory and the rubrics cube. In 1974, Arnold Rubrics invited the popular three-dimensional combination puzzle known as the rubrics cube. Mathematically, the rubrics cube can be described by group theory. The rubrics cube has a total of six faces and six colors, so the cube is divided into six directions. When we turn the cube, we use letters instead of operations. Taking the first letter of each face means turning the face 90 degrees clockwise after aligning the face with itself. We write the rotation of cube in this way. In math, a group is a particular collection of elements. Elements can be a set of integers, a face of rubric's cube, or anything. A group has four properties. For closure, all group operations must be closed or restricted to only group elements. So in our square, for any operation you do, like turn it one way or the other, you will still end up with an element of the group. For the associative, no matter when we put parentheses, when we are doing a single group operation, we still get the same result. Like if we turn our square right two times, then right once, that's the same as once, then twice. Another example is that for numbers, 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1. For the identity, for every operation, that's an element of our group called the identity. When we apply it to any other elements in our group, we still get that element. So for both turning the square and adding to integers, our identity here is zero. For inverse, every group element has an element called its inverse, also in the group. When the two are brought together using the group's addition, operation, they result in the identity element zero, so they can be thought of as cancelling each other out. Based on these properties, let's expand our square back into a full-fledged rubrics cube. This is a still a group that satisfies all of our properties, though so now with considerably more elements and more operations. We can turn each row and column of each face. Each position is called a permutation. And more po elements a group has, the more possible permutations there are. A rubric's cube has more than 43 quintillion permutations, so trying to solve it randomly isn't going to work so well. However, using group theory, we can analyze the cube and determine a sequence of permutations that will result in a solution. And in fact, that's exactly what most solvers do, even using a group theory notation indicating terms. Order of operation could help us to restore the rubric's cube. For restore rubric's cube, do any fixed combination of operations and rubric's cube must be restored after a limited number of repetitions. Then for this number of repetitions, we call it the order of an operation. Here is an example. And here is a proof for the order of operations. Um, therefore, after any one operation group is performed a limited number of times, the rubrics cube will be restored to its original state. And here is my reference. Thanks for listening.